The case is closed against Bill Cosby. Last week, a jury concluded that he was guilty of sexually assaulting Andrea Constant 14 years ago. He was convicted on three counts of aggravated and decent assault against Constant, who at the time was an employee of Temple University. It has been a long process for her. The conviction follows a civil lawsuit filed in 2005, which was resolved with a cash settlement of over $3 million. This was followed in 2015 with criminal charges which were largely based on evidence that Cosby had given in the course of the civil case. Cosby's accusers celebrated the verdict on the stairs of the court. Commentators around the world have greeted the verdict with glee. Yet, in the aftermath of the verdict, many have been left with a bad taste in the mouth. At Spike, we have previously expressed concern at how the discussion of Cosby's case seemed to abandon the presumption of innocence. Commentators were calling Cosby a serial rapist long before a jury saw any evidence. After the verdict, Cosby's wife Camille said Cosby had been the victim of a lynch mob, comparing Cosby's treatment to that of Emmett Till, the 14-year-old black boy lynched in 1955 when he was accused of flirting with a white woman. For drawing such a comparison, she has been called vile. And yet, notwithstanding the guilty verdict, she has a point. Of course, women expressing anger about the way a particular case has been dealt with is not the same as lynching someone. But the sentiments that have been expressed about Cosby, the idea that he had to be convicted at all costs and that his ongoing freedom was an affront to justice, show how dangerous any form of hysteria can be. There are also certain parallels with the way that black men were treated at the end of the 19th century. The context and the consequences of the cases are completely different. But the abandonment of due process, the rush to punish at all costs, is the same. To see the problem with this, you only have to consider the writings of great civil rights activist Ida B. Wells. Wells was threatened with murder by whites in Memphis, where she ran her Memphis free speech newspaper, for investigating spurious allegations of sexual violence made against black men. She used the paper to expose how the allegations almost always involved consenting relationships between white women and black men. It was the imagined threat to white women of a rapacious black population that provided moral justification to racist murderers in the South. Of course, the Cosby case is different. He has been convicted by a jury of his peers. He has been made subject to proper process. But in the rush to judge him, in the desperation to treat him as a symptom of broader misogyny, the online movement against Cosby turned him into a symbol of a wider malaise. As a result, many commentators failed to scrutinize particular claims carefully and objectively. Much like at the end of the 19th century, due process went out the window in the rush to judge Cosby.